So the first thing we do, we get an outlook of the market before we go any further, before we take it one step further, that's where we're going. Next, know thyself. What does that mean? Um, I love this quote by, by Jack Schwager from Stock Market Wizards. Older book, but a great book, where he said, an honest self-appraisal in respect to confidence, in respect to confidence, may be one of the best predictors of a trader's prospects for success in the markets. It's your confidence. Now, I'll tell you what, I got a lot of confidence when I invest, but there, were, there was a starting point where I didn't. There was a pretty big learning curve that I had to figure out um, when I started trading, and everybody goes through that. You're going to have to get confidence in what I'm telling you. You're going to have to get confidence in your own abilities. You're going to have to get confidence that the market really does what you expect it to do when you see the things that we're talking about. There's a lot of levels of confidence that you're going to have to gain. But once you're there, I promise you this, your, your trading history is going to look a whole lot different, a whole lot better, I should say. One of the things about knowing ourselves is that we're greedy. You know, the reason we're in the market is we want to make profits. And if that greed drives us, it's going to be a problem. And you know that, but a lot of people subconsciously don't know that they're actually, um, you know, exhibiting the, the, uh, the problems of it. One of the things that we look for is positive price performance um, before we invest in it. We're always looking for positive price performance. Well, I, I, I get that. We want positive price performance. But you know what? Most of the time when we hit a cyclical low, it's not currently going to have a really good positive performance. It'll have just hit a low and just barely be starting to turn. And if, and if you're one of those, you're going to be waiting until it's absolutely proof positive, which will be closer to the top that you'll be getting in. Um, you're going to start comparing with others who are successful, and you're going to start talking to people who are trading the same kind of thing. And everybody's got a story, and I've got to tell you that. Don't listen to them because most of the time it's inflated. Um, if you just learned of, a, of somebody making a lot of money in something, the chances are you're going to be looking at that and wondering, man, oh, is it too late? Maybe I could get in. Um, you're going to be learning of high probability payoffs. If you're getting those emails in your inbox, I promise you it, they're going to sway you. You're going to try it. Everybody's done it. I've done it. Everybody I know has done it, and almost everybody I know has lost doing it. One of the big famous guys you see on CNBC cost me 12 grand on a stupid stock that had I really done my own homework on it, I would have never bought in a million years. Why? Because I was lazy that day and I go, you know, this guy's got a pretty good track record. I think I'll take a flyer on this one. 12 grand. Yeah, a whole lot more than his subscription, I'll tell you that. Um, when we're looking for quick payoffs, when we like a company, everybody likes Apple, but does that mean that Apple is going to always go up? Um, the glamorous association with its companies or products. Look, they spend millions of dollars. When I first got out of college, I went into advertising. I know all about that. I know all about making something look good. I was around the guy who came up with Fly the Friendly Skies of, of United. He, he wrote that one before my time, but he wrote that one. He, uh, he came up with the uh, Marlboro Man, um, and uh, he was with Leo Burnett. And uh, I know all about the way that, that people paint things and what they try to get you to do. Um, one of the things that happens is that if you make a mistake, you want to fix it. And uh, that's one of the things that happens down here next to the last. We want to make money really bad from, from the investment that we're in now. You know, maybe the last one wasn't good. Um, but I got to I got to make it now. I got to make up for that loss, boy. If you want to lose money, try to make up for a loss. If that's your mindset, I promise you, you're going to do things you shouldn't be doing. Well, anyway, you can read through these at, at another time um, when this is recorded. But uh, let me let me go through just a couple of these on on the fear side of things. Fear, greed. You know, if there's been a recent negative price performance, it it'll get people scared. I already told you that prices are going to have come down and bottomed and just barely starting to turn up when it's time to be buying. And um, it's going to be scary for those who aren't um, familiar with that. If, if you're used to buying when things have already shown that they've run for a while, number one, there's not a lot of profit left when you've probably gotten in. And number two, if you've gotten in on the way down, it, it scares you to death to even think about getting in when something's close to bottom because you're not sure that that is the bottom. 
we don't want to be catching falling knives. Um, if there's the possibility of, uh, of uh, dramatic negative events, that there's, there's rumors of bankruptcy or scandals or all those things, if there's a, um, um, uh, if you don't like the company or its products, chances are you'll have a hard time uh, buying into that. If you have negative associations with anything regarding that kind of investment, maybe you tried options once and you swore to yourself, I'm never going to try that again. Um, and if, and if it's so critical that you just don't want to lose money, that fear can be, can be absolutely like handcuffs. And uh, there's just no way to trade when you got handcuffs on. There's no way to make money. There's no way to think straight when you have those um, uh, negative emotions. The, um, the investing errors are always magnified. Any errors that you've ever made are always going to be at ma magnified by your uncertainty, your inexperience, and your disorganization. And people don't think about that a lot. Are you an organized person? Um, are you a person that leaves a lot of things left undone? You know, there are certain things you probably shouldn't trade, um, especially those things that, that have um, higher frequency or require more babysitting. There's a bottom line is that you are probably not a person who should do those. Um, when we're uncertain about the significance of a market or an investment-related information, chances are that your errors could be increased. When we're inexperienced in the market environment, if you have never been through a bear market, if you never succeeded in making money in a bear market, the next bear market is going to be very scary to you, and you may compound your errors if you haven't learned to do it differently. If you have untested, disorganized, or an incomplete investment plan, and we'll talk a little bit about investment plans. Everything that I'm covering today is kind of an introduction. We're going to be talking a lot about psychology going forward. It's, it's an important part of learning to trade. And most traders, most investors are their worst enemy, not because of their inability to, uh, or, or their skill level, but their inability to think through the problems and understand them from a perspective of success. You know, the brain is really interesting. Uh, I've spent a lot of years studying the brain, and one of the things that I enjoyed learning was that we tend to repeat um, what, we, what we've done in the past, even if it's not successful. We, our brain tends to learn and to solidify the, neuro, the neural pathways that tell us what to do. In fact, um, what the brain really wants to do is have the highest stimulation at the lowest possible cost. Now, what that means is that it wants to have a lot of stimulation, but it doesn't want to have to work for it. And that's why boredom is so dangerous. Um, if you're bored when you're trading, it's a dangerous time because it means that you're going to start, your brain is going to start seeking some excitement. It means that your brain is going to learn how to stimulate excitement that may not be the right pathway to, to success. I'm going to, be, I'm going to be teaching about that as, as we go forward, but the, the key is, that uh, we've got to learn and train our brains to, to work every bit as much as our intellect to understand the strategies. Um, some people have an, uh, a, a confidence bias. They're overconfident. They're over-optimistic. -op um, when it comes to their risk bias, we're going to be looking at how we are risk-averse in some cases. Are we emotionally vulnerable? Do we hang on to losers too long, hoping against hope? Do we cut our winners short because, gee, now I have some profit and I'm going I'm to grab that? You're probably smiling as you read some of this because everybody fits into this at, to one degree or another. I don't care what your experience level is. The brain starts to play the tricks, and it's one of the factors we're going to, to learn to work around and through. Anyway, self-discipline and the ability to postpone gratification you know, if you've got to have that money this month, if you're trying to live on that income, um, you've set yourself up for some, some um, difficulties if you need that money. It's okay to be a trader. People always ask, you know, do you like to trade? There, there's a period of time that I traded for a living and did that exclusively, and I hated it. I got to tell you, I hated it because now what I was doing was taking out of my future what I needed to live on right now. I prefer much more to let my future just continue to build and have an income separate from that, that that I can spend some time on. But, you know, to each his own, it it just fits better with me that way.